Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to Tag Tuesday. This Tuesday I'm doing the My Literary Canon Tag. I was tagged by Greg over at another Bibliophile Reads, uh, so I'll put a link to his uh, version of this down below. This tag was originally created by Ink and Paper Blog, and I'll put a link to uh, their channel uh, down below as well, as well as links to the channels and people who I am tagging. I think this tag has been around for a while. I'm a little unclear. I've tried not to watch any of the tags. I watched Greg's because he tagged me, but I haven't watched any of the other versions of this I've seen recently. And I know that Matt Wall did one, and I know that Alan from Big Hard Books and Classics did one, and I'm going to go watch theirs today as soon as I do mine. In part, I didn't want to watch anybody else's uh, for fear that it might influence mine, uh, and particularly that it might influence me to leave some people out so as not to be repetitive, which felt a little bit, dis you know, would make me feel a little bit like I wasn't really being truthful about this. But so the idea here is that you are supposed to pick 15 authors and divide them in three groups of five. The first groups of authors are writers who you feel like are foundational uh, to the literary uh, canon, uh, who have published books in the last 100 years. That published books in the last 100 years is kind of key but to creating this group, but in lots of ways it kind of fits right in my reading wheelhouse, and particularly the reading wheelhouse of my past. And then there's lit literary legacy. These would be authors who, you know, I think the implication is that they are nearing perhaps the end of their writing lives. I'm not sure that's fair for all the ones I chose, uh, but who, you know, will likely be or maybe are already in the process of having their works canonized. And then the last group is literary future. And these are just authors that uh, we think, or in this case I think, uh, are likely to make up a part of the literary canon moving forward. And, you know, in my case, most of these are relatively uh, young authors. Um, and to be honest with you, there are some authors I want to put on the list, so I put them wherever I wanted them to in those last two cat categories. But you should know that, that my list of uh, literary canon is sometimes just personal to me and what I like, and sometimes it's also what I like plus what I think uh, will be, be become canon based on the direction in which it seems like uh, literature uh, and writing is heading. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to the list. So the first group is the foundation. These are the authors who published books in the last hundred years that you think are part of the foundation of my literary canon. So the first one on that list is going to be Ernest Hemingway. Nobody's shocked. That's why I did it up here in front. I don't know that I need to say anything about Ernest Hemingway. Um, other than that my reason, I think, why he will remain canon, and most of his books, by the way, were published after 1922, why he will remain part of the canon is that, that Hemingway fundamentally changed the way in which American writing takes place, uh, where there's less exposition, uh, more implication, um, you know, more kind of showing, not telling, more using dialogue to convey emotion rather than description, and I think uh, you'll find that you know, in your reading that, that there are lots of writers from Hemingway forward to today who still write that way, and that's why I think he's important. Second on my list would be William Faulkner, who I think Faulkner is uh, just a great writer uh, beyond uh, the, you know, stream of consciousness novels, which probably he's most famous or infamous for, uh, The Sound of the Fury, As I Like Dying, uh, Absalom, Absalom. Faulkner is also just really incredibly talented at weaving together a story and kind of bring all the parts together. And if you've read uh, any of Faulkner's novels, whether they're the stream of conscious ones that people think of are difficult or not, you know, you have to kind of be impressed with his ability to kind of bring it all together and to make a story. Now, sometimes he stitched those novels together out of stories he's already written and he just kind of expanded on that. And sometimes he created them kind of whole, but I think that and other reasons put Faulkner uh, in my canon. Uh, also, Virginia Woolf, who I just think is one of the great uh, kind of literary geniuses of the early 20th century. I've read three Virginia Woolf novels, uh, books, sorry. I've read uh, To the Lighthouse. I read Mrs. Dalloway, which I think is just an excellent, amazing novel. And then uh, her essay, uh, A Room of One's Own. And one of the reasons why I, I think that uh, the next writers are gonna, I have in my literary canon are there is in part because they didn't just write fiction, they also wrote essays. Uh, and A Room of One's Own is, has to be, I think, one of the most influential uh, essays, literary essays ever written. Um, and so I, I would definitely put Virginia Woolf on there, You're kind of multi-talented across, you know, two, at least two different forms of writing. Uh, the next one I listen in a similar way is James Baldwin. I love James Baldwin. I think 
that his insights into race and racism in the United States are still incredibly, uh, in, are still incredibly important today. You know, I think a lot of people in my generation, uh, particularly when President Obama was elected president, we we thought we were really making progress and moving beyond kind of the. Uh, racist fears that seem to grip the United States are for so much of our history and you know now we know we haven't moved beyond that which to me makes Baldwin even more important both his essays and his fiction explore those issues and then Toni Morrison is the fifth author I have here in the foundation of my literary canon because well she won a Nobel Prize as did two of the other people on my list uh, but she just wrote incredibly uh, beautiful prose uh, incredibly powerful stories and really kind of, I think, exposed a whole uh, generation of readers, and still does, to uh, the African-American experience uh, in the United States. And her novels are immersed in various aspects of African-American life in the United States, good and bad. And, and I think Beloved is the greatest American novel ever written. Okay, so those are my five uh, uh, foundational authors in my literary canon. So the next category is literary legacy. And as I said, I think these are authors who are probably well on their way to having their works be a part of the canon if they aren't already. Uh, so the first one I picture was Solomon Rushdie. Uh, I've read three of Rushdie's novels, Haroon and the Sea of Stories, which I thought was interesting. Uh, it was a book of stories he wrote for his son while he was actually living and hiding for those nine years. Um, then I read Midnight's Children, which I have to be honest with you, I did not care for. Uh, and then I read, but but the first Salman Rushdie I read was the, was the Satanic Verses, the book which got the fatwa called on him by um, the Iranian religious leaders, and which we've just seen recently an attempt to carry that out uh, all these years later. Uh, and I really thought the Satanic Verses was an excellent novel when I read it, incredibly creative and inventive with all kinds of information and depth and I just thought it was great, and I would imagine Rushdie was already on his way uh, to being in the literary canon if you know we didn't already consider him there. The second author on my list of legacy is Tim O'Brien, the American writer who is probably most famous for writing books centered around um, the war in Vietnam and the war in Vietnam's effect on a whole generation of Americans. Uh, O'Brien himself is a veteran of the Vietnam War. Uh, I've read Going After Cacciato, uh, The Things They Carried, which is amazing. Uh, and then really, and I mentioned this uh, in my Saturday video, In the Lake of the Woods, which I just think is an incredibly underrated uh, novel. Just a great thrillerish, literary, you know, explore social issues kind of uh, novel and just incredibly powerful. So I put Tim O'Brien on my legacy list. I also have Louise Erdrich. You, if you follow my channel, you know that I read a lot of Louise Erdrich's novels. I think I'm up to nine or so now. Uh, probably will read uh, the 10th uh, sometime in September. Um, I think she does a beautiful job of not just not just that her writing is beautiful I, because I think that it is, but she does a great job of kind of creating um, I don't want to say a familiarity with, but kind of you know describing the experience of indigenous Americans uh, living on the reservations or off the reservations or sometimes on and off and trying to make their way uh, in the you know white world of the United States of America and those border lines between uh, Native American traditions and modern life and Native American land and encroaching uh, American land, Native American customs and an encroachment of you know uh, Western traditions and ideas and the blending those together. And I just think her work taken as a whole is, is really amazing. Uh, so I would definitely put her on the list. Uh, here for Legacy. Then I have Jan Foss now. I don't know how weird Jan Foss fits here in here age-wise, but you know already, if you've watched my channel, that I really love the Septology. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the names of the books over here. The other name, uh, Eyes Another, and A New Name. Uh, those three volumes that made up the Septology, I just thought were incredibly beautiful. Just amazing feat of writing, um, incredible um, empathy and care and uh, an incredible kind of way of looking at grieving and loss and life and looking back on life from an older age. I just thought they were beautiful and great. And then the fifth author I have on my list here uh, for literary legacies, Michael Ondaatje. I've read, I think, four Michael Ondaatje novels. I read Warlight, uh, In the Skin of a Lion, uh, The English Patient, and Diversadero. Uh, so I've read four of his novels. 
And Michael Ondaatje writes beautifully. I know I've said that many times, but hey, we're talking about literary canon here. He writes beautifully, and his stories are oftentimes kind of, I think, explore uh, buried emotions and people who, uh, you know, in Hemingway's terms, might be strong at the broken places and kind of interrupted life and interrupted love and interrupted relationships. And I, I think he's a beautiful writer. I oftentimes have issues with the way his, and I heard somebody else say this the other day, with the way his novels end. I don't always think he pulls that off particularly well. I think that was true in Warlight. I think that's true in The Skin of a Lion. Um, so, you know, I have issues with him, but I definitely think uh, that he's on, uh, he's definitely one of those writers who, whose work will become canon. Now, a lot of these writers have also won important awards, Pulitzer's, Bookers, etc. I think Salman Rushdie's Midnight Children was awarded the title of Booker of All Bookers, I think. Um, anyway, so, you know, I think they're well on their way, and, and maybe they're already uh, a part of the canon. And then the last category is Literary Future. These are five authors you think will become part of the literary canon moving forward. And so this is really kind of, in a lot of ways, guesswork, and really just, I think, in a lot of ways, talking about maybe slightly younger writers whose work has really impressed you. Now, these would be the writers whose work I've read uh, oftentimes the least. Uh, so first on my list of uh, literary future is Jesmyn Ward. Jesmyn Ward wrote uh, Salvage the Bones and oh my goodness, Sing Unburied Sing. Uh, two novels I thought were, were really powerful and great and showed more about the modern African-American experience and poverty and, you know, all the kind of legacy of racism uh, in modern America. She also published a, uh, a nonfiction book called the, the Men We Reaped. So she kind of writes in both formats. Again, you know, I mentioned this about when I was talking about Virginia Woolf and also about um, uh, James Baldwin and also I could have said it about Toni Morrison too. I think writers who write in more than one uh, kind of genre, you know, prove they can write fiction and Nonfiction are more likely to end up in the canon, so I think Jasmine Ward has a good shot. Probably, maybe the longest shot here is Valeria Luiselli, whose uh, whose book, uh, her her essay on immigration, uh, "Tell Me How This Ends," I thought was just incredibly great. And then her novel, "The Lost Children Archive," was one of my favorite novels from a couple of years ago. Just I think I just thought it was a stunningly beautiful, well executed uh, work of fiction. Uh, and I think she has real talent and a real kind of unique view about how to structure novels and about the function of a novel and how a novel can work. And I, I, I would hope that she'll keep writing, look forward to more of her work. Probably the safest, uh, maybe, or one of the, ne the next two are probably fairly safe. Uh, you know, uh, future members of literary canon. One is Colson Whitehead. I mean, the man's already won the Pulitzer Prize twice uh, for the Nickel Boys and for uh, Underground Railroad. Uh, I read Harlem Shuffle this year. That's three of his novels I've read. I, I just think there's something about his approach to writing, his writing, and the stories he tells, and the way he constructs them is incredibly entertaining and uh, carries meaning uh, and carries the weight of the message that, it's carry, that it has incredibly lightly. Um, and I think it's just incredibly well done. In addition to that, even though I haven't read all his other books, he's written in more than one genre. I believe it's, he has a sci-fi novel. Maybe, he has a, maybe it's a horror novel. I can't remember. I think that also kind of helps him out. Then fourth on my list is Olga Tokarczuk. I've only read one of her novels, and that's Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. But her book, Flights, and the books of Jacob um, get a lot of positive attention here on BookTube and in the book world. And she did win a Nobel Prize uh, for literature. So I'm going to put her on that list. Uh, I'm not sure she fits with the age of the other writers, but I didn't want to look up how old all these people were. Uh, so I put Olga Tokarczuk on here at number four on my list of the future. And then finally, the last one I have here is the Kweke Emeze. I've read two of their novels. I read um, uh, Freshwater and I read The Death of Vivek Oji. Um, I think their writing is still kind of raw, but there is a real power and a beauty there. Uh, I, you know, for me with Freshwater, I didn't think the execution was particularly great, but I thought the power, the emotion was very effectively carried in that novel and then in the death of Vivek Oji I kind of thought that the the creation of place and the atmosphere and the world in Nigeria in which that story took place was 
incredibly well done. And I thought the relationships from the characters, for the most part, were really beautifully described. And I just thought that that in that book they showed a little bit more maturity as a writer. I do think that the their I do think it's possible their best novel still hasn't been written yet. Anyway, so there you go. There is my uh, literary canon uh, tag. I want to thank Greg again for tagging me, and I'm going to tag a whole bunch of people uh, because I like to see a, a lot of people do this who have diverse reading. So I want to tag Erica at the Broken Spine. Um, if you don't know, Erica um, has a great channel uh, and just really great insights in the books that she reads. Jack, the Rambling Raconteur, because he reads incredibly diversely. Mark Nash, because I know I'll get you know a lot of... Uh, if he does it, I think I'll get a lot of really great uh, Mark Nashy kind of recommendations. His canon should be completely different, probably, uh, from my own. Uh, Cena for beating around the books, uh, who I love to hear talk about books. I'm sure she has can come up with interesting answers. Cousin from Always Doing, because uh, I've tried to think of somebody who's, you know, my reading taste and their reading taste almost never overlaps, and, and that would be it. So I'd love to see what Cousin has to say, what her answers are. Uh, it would be great if she did an all-romance uh, canon. No pressure to Cousin, do whatever you want to do. Uh, Cynthia from Book Whimsy, um, that's her channel, and uh, she always has great things, incredibly intelligent things. She knows, like, you know, a, a world of, of stuff, so I'd love to see what her answers are. Uh, Scott from Gunpowder F Fiction and Plot. Uh, I, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm sorry if this sounds bad, I'm hoping Thomas Hardy didn't publish anything after 1922, so I don't have to hear Scott talk about Thomas Hardy, but anything else, he, any other part of this list he wants to create, I think would be great. Also, Nell from Book Hunt, I would love to hear her list of the literary canon because that would be entertaining. And finally, also, Ollie from Criminali, I want to tag you to do this because, again, I think that, that your reading tastes and mine are probably different enough where there's not going to be a lot of crossover, and I really want to see uh, what you put on the list. Anyway, there you go. Uh, there is my version of the My Literary Canon uh, tag. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below, and as always, thank you for watching.